Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to install third-party pip packages into your AWS Lambda functions using a tool called Docker. By the end of it, you will be able to create production-level applications with any package you want using this exact methodology. Now, in a previous video, which I will link right here, we showed you how to install packages using a bootstrap method by installing the packages within the Lambda functions themselves. While this does work for smaller applications and prototyping, I do not recommend that for serious applications. Instead, we'll be walking you through how to use a tool called Docker, as we mentioned, which is frankly the gold standard to do this sort of thing, and it will allow us to create a reproducible environment with any packages or tools we like to be able to run our Lambda functions with pip packages compatible in AWS operating systems. I will walk you through the tools you need, the Docker build file, and finally how to deploy it to AWS to run your projects. A lot to learn, but this is worth it if you are serious about developing cloud applications and environments. Docker is incredibly important for any beginner to learn. So I do not want to waste any of your time, guys. Let's jump into it and see what we need for the tools to get started with this methodology. First things first, we just want to install the two tools we need to be able to do this. The first one is obviously Docker. Now Docker, you can just go to docker.com slash get started. It is a free open source tool. They do have some pricing you can use for more advanced Docker like support and that sort of thing, but we do not need that. You could just go to this link right here, which I will link down below and download it for your system and go ahead and create an account and sign in. This is a really important tool that you'll be using pretty much for the rest of your life if you are a developer that will allow you to create images and containers and it will manage those for you locally. And we're actually gonna have to deploy those images to ECR, which is Elastic Cloud Registry on Amazon, which is their container service that they have for us. And in order to be able to do that, we actually have to download the AWS CLI as well. So to download the AWS CLI, you just want to go to aws.amazon.com slash CLI, as you can see here, and walk through the steps to actually install the CLI. So on the top here, they have some installations for Windows, Mac, Linux, et cetera. And so you could just go ahead and install it and walk through the configuration. So I believe once you install it, there's only one command you have to run to actually sign in. And this will allow you to do a lot of things, for example, deploy to EC2 and much other AWS related applications you can use with the CLI. We'll be using it to link our Docker to ECR to allow us to deploy the images into our into our ECR. So that's pretty much it in terms of the tools you need. So I'm gonna give you time to go ahead and install that. We're not gonna get into the details of all these tools, just know you have to install them. And the installation is pretty straightforward. So once you have that, let's jump into the Docker build file side of things to explain that and how to configure that properly. Okay, so now that we have Docker and we have our AWS CLI installed, next thing we want to do is we want to create something called a Docker file. So go into your project and just name a file, a new file, call it exactly this Docker file with a, cop with a capital D. And it should have this little mark on the left there where it knows that it is a Docker file if you are in Visual Studio Code. So this Docker file pretty much defines the environment in which our our application is running in, in this case, our Lambda function, and it specifies uh, resources and dependencies we need to build in the base image of our, uh, of our Docker image that we will use in our Lambda function, okay? So that's pretty much what we're doing at a high level is we're specifying things we need in this image so we can actually run our code. That's really all we're doing in Docker, and Docker files form the basis of Docker builds. So in this Docker file, you could see there's a lot of comments here. So you can go ahead and read those on your own time. We're going to go over some of them here. And so basically what we're doing first in this Docker file is we are building from an actual image. So we're pretty much like inheriting from another image that Amazon has on public.ecr.aws. And we're inheriting from this image that already has the Python 3.12 in the environment. And it also is on this OS. So we're using x86 underscore 64. So that's one of the Lambda function runtime environments we can use. And this is really important because if you're watching this video, what you probably realize if you actually try to pip install packages that aren't in these runtime environments, what you'll find is if you get those packages into your Lambda functions, they won't be runnable. So you have to actually install in these runtime environments for the pip packages to work. Hence why a lot of people are probably watching this video is because they probably try to install these packages from another environment, whether it is Mac OS, Linux, or even Windows, and you'll find that that doesn't work. So this line is probably the most important line in terms of the environment because we're putting ourselves in an environment where when we install the pip packages, they'll be compatible with the AWS runtime. 
And of course, it's Python 3.12. You can define this based on the version. As of the making of this video, this is the latest version we have. Next, we want to define the pip installation. So once we are in this base image from AWS, which they provide for us here on their public registry, okay, we are going to just pip install the packages we need. So I have this pip install command in the target. You can define this based on the pip packages you need for your application to run. I have some machine learning going on for my application, so I have some related packages. Of course, you can change that as you need. Nothing too crazy there, so just know that we do that. And next we have actually here is we have a final stage for the build. So we call this a multi-stage multi -stage build. And that's pretty much to ensure that the final image is lean, secure, and optimized for running. That's pretty much all we're doing at a high level. So it's good practice to have a multi-stage build, a multi-stage build in this case, which is just good practice for our Docker images. And finally, next, this is also really important. So we say here, copy only the necessary files from the builder stage. We only want the files we we need in our Docker image. So we really want this thing to be as lightweight as possible. So only import files you need to save space for your ECR, because the more space you take on ECR, the more you will be charged for that service. So try to be as lightweight as possible, even with packages, do not install packages you do not need, because over time, if you are building a lot of containers or you're having a lot of images stored in ECR, you do not want them to be really bloated. So just be as lean as possible and pick the exact files you need. You could see what I'm doing here is I'm, specif I'm specifying some files in my project that I need for this code to run. So we have this apply BERT get MPNs. We're not gonna go into these files. You do not have to know them. They're just Python files I need for my Lambda helpers to run. Okay, and we have like another model here. This is just a machine learning model from another folder. And you specify the path in the actual Docker container itself. So you specify the local path and then you specify the, the Docker path in the container. So that's also very important. And of course you can change this based on the files you need. Now, another important thing we need is if we actually go to one of the functions, we do need this, this Lambda handler somewhere. So you can see I have this Lambda handler and that is for this to be executable within a Lambda function. It has to have this Lambda handler. So be sure to define that as well as you please. So I define my Lambda handler in the handler.py. And then finally, I have the command here. So I tell them where this Lambda handler is. This is really important. So you have to set the command to your handler. And of course, I have some brief instructions here why that's important. And it's pretty much to specify the command that will execute when this container starts in your Lambda. And the last thing you have here is we also have a Docker ignore file. So create a dot Docker ignore. And this is to help the bloating of your Docker image. So this just helps. This is just good practice. So some things we do not want to get into the container because it's not, it's, it's not necessary for the code to run. So you include a Docker ignore just to help the health of your Docker images. So that's pretty much all we need. So this defines our environment that we're going to be running our application in, in our Lambda. I hope everything is clear. Any questions about this, let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, so now that we have our Docker file understood and what we need in our Docker file to actually run our projects, next thing is we actually want to take the steps to build our Docker image and deploy it to ECR. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have a terminal open. I'm just using the one in Visual Studio Code so we can have a command line to run our commands in AWS CLI. So the first command we actually want to run is this AWS configure command. Now, let me just go scroll up to it. So this is the first command you want to run if it's your first time using AWS CLI. I already ran this command, but pretty much this sets you up locally to start running CLI commands. So once you click enter here, it's just going to ask you for some account information on your AWS account, such as your secret key to allow you to sign in to be able to run AWS level commands that will allow us pretty much to create ECR repository and deploy to ECR. So go ahead and click enter there. I'm not going to because I already did. And then once you have it configured, the next step you're going to do is you're actually going to create a, a ECR repository as you could see with this command. So we pretty much specify the repository name and the region we want the repository in. So that's all this command is doing. And I can go ahead and click enter. I already have a repository with this name, so it should fail. But if it's your first time creating a repository and you are configured with AWS, this should work just fine. So now that we have that repository created, which is where our Docker images in ECR will be stored, the next thing we want to do is we want to connect our local Docker to our ECR because our Docker images are being built locally, but we wanna funnel them into our AWS repository to have them accessible to our Lambda functions. 
So first things first, before you even run this next command I'm about to show you, you wanna be sure you are signed in to Docker Desktop as you could see here. So I am signed into Docker Desktop and you'll see that it's running. We could just go to the top here on Mac and it shows that Docker Desktop is running. So if you went ahead and downloaded it and opened the app, you should be good to go. You can even create a Docker account for more enhanced uh, user interfaces and being able to save things in your account. You don't even have to create a Docker account for that to work. So the command that we have to run is actually, let me just scroll up here because there are a bunch of commands. And by the way, I will link all these commands in the blog in the description down below for you guys to copy to make your lives a little easier. So this is the next command we have to run once our Docker desktop is running. So this pretty much connects our AWS to our local Docker. And the only thing we want to substitute in this command is first of all, the region. So if you're not using US East, you want to change the region. And also you want to change your AWS account ID. So if you've never gotten your AWS account ID before, you could just go to your AWS account, go to the console, go to the top right, and you have your account ID. You can see, I can just copy it from there and just paste it into that command here that we have. And of course, with no uh, slashes, it's just the pure numbers there. And we could just go ahead and click enter. That should authenticate us to be able to funnel our local images to AWS. So now that we have that capability, the next thing we want to do is simply build the image and then eventually push the image to our ECR repository. So the next command we have to run is this docker build command. Now this is really important because first of all, in this command, you actually give the name of the image. So we'll just call it your first image. So you can get creative with that if you like, but just for demo purposes, we're not gonna get too creative with the name. And finally, you have the context. So this is where the, the Docker file is. So if you're running this in the same directory as the Docker file, which you could see I am in the same directory, I just CD'd into the same directory as my Docker file, you just put dot and it should be able to build the image. Now this is gonna be quick for me because I actually built this image before and Docker has some caching system that allows you if you, if you run the same command over and over, it optimizes for you to be able to run that command faster. So if you run that command for the first time, I believe it will be slow, but I already built this image a bunch of times so you could see it was fairly quick. So now that we have the image built locally, there's just another two commands we have to run to actually deploy this to ECR. So I'm just gonna scroll up here again. Actually, let me clear this to start fresh here. So, so far what we did is we logged in, we connected our Docker to our ECR, we built the image, and now we just want to tag it and push it. So we just have two commands left here that we're going to run. So first we just want to run docker tag, this, this command right here. So let me just go ahead and take this off. So this is, a, I added two commands back to back. So semicolon, you can actually, if, it, if you're not used to CMD, you can run two commands in a row by separating them with a semicolon. So we'll just do it step by step here so you don't get confused. So we're just going to tag our image. You could see we have that same URL for our uh, AWS, as you could see that we used in the previous command and we have the repo we specified. So make sure that is the same. And the next thing we have is a tag here. So this tag, we're not gonna play around too much with tags, but just know tags in Docker you can use them for managing versions of images. So that's really popularly used in Docker. And of course, there's so much to Docker. We're not gonna get into it in this tutorial. We're just doing something very basic, pushing the Docker image to ECR, but really you want to be elaborate with your tags. So if you do have a deployment in the future, what you want to happen is you wanna be sure that you know if anything goes wrong in a deployment, you wanna know which tag caused that issue. So you wanna be elaborate with those and of course, let's just go back to running that command. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Looks like it just disappeared. So there it is. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this command. And I believe this, this next command that we're going to run, the push command is going to take a while to push it to, to our ECR or our AWS registry. So finally, this is the last command to actually get our local image that we just built and tagged into AWS. So once we go ahead and run this, we'll just give it a few minutes to actually do all that. And you can see, this does take a while, so we're just gonna go back to the segment of the video when this is done running. But pretty much when this is done running, it should be accessible for us on AWS if we did everything properly in that repository to be able to link it into our Lambdas and access that, that Docker image, which we can initiate containers from the images to actually run our Lambdas. Okay, it looks like our image was pushed to ECR successfully now that this command was done running after some time. 
So let's just go to our AWS console and go to ECR. You could just search ECR here, which is actually Elastic Con Container Registry. I believe earlier in the video, I called it Elastic Cloud Registry. So that is my mistake. And once you are in there, you could just go here, you can go to repositories and we could just check that it is in that repository. So my Lambda repo, we see that tag is right here. So that is awesome. So now we have access to this image and we can deploy it into our Lambda functions. And every time this image runs in a Lambda function, it creates something called a container in Docker to be able to run the application. So that's just really basics in Docker. You don't have to worry about that too much. Just know every time we run this in a Lambda, it does create a container, which is an instance of an image. Okay, so now that we have this in our repository successfully, let's actually go deploy this to a Lambda. Let's go here. And then let's just go ahead and create a new function. We'll call it, let's go to the top there, container image. We'll call it testing container. Okay, and then we could just go here, container URI. We could just browse images. They make it really easy in AWS as they do many things to actually do this sort of thing. So we just go to my Lambda repo, select that tag, and then select image right there. And of course we want to select the same architecture that we use to actually build this image. So that's really important. As you remember when we went over that Docker file, this is the architecture we use. And we can go ahead and create this function. Okay. So give that a brief moment there. Now, is it a little slower than a regular Lambda function because it does take some time to actually deploy this image to be accessible for this Lambda? So we're gonna give this time to be done loading here. And once it's done, we'll actually run the image and make sure that it's working as expected. Okay, so it looks like it was successfully deployed. And then once it is successfully deployed, we'll just get a green uh, message on the top there. I already went ahead and changed the configuration as you can see here. This is really important, especially when you're working with Docker containers. Just bump the memory a little bit because these Docker containers require more memory on average than regular Lambda functions because we're pretty much deploying a whole application from these Docker containers that has tools and bigger pip packages that we use that we would use compared to a regular Lambda function. And of course, increase the timeout respectively as well. So you can just go to the configuration tab, change it and edit it as needed. And finally, we can just go to the test. I already ran a test offline here and we could just go ahead and test this. I, I just tested the base command in my invocation. Of course, you can change the event JSON as needed, but once you do test successfully, you should see that you have access to all those pip packages you had within the Docker file. So that is pretty cool. If there are any errors, you will see an X here and you can actually go and view the logs. And if there, if there is an error, it should show you the details, which you can go ahead and fix locally, go ahead and build the container again and add whatever packages you need and redeploy it. And once you redeploy it, you can actually easily update the image by going to the image tab and deploying a new image to that Lambda function and just going here and browsing the image and just selecting it again. And overall, just a very robust way to build your applications. And once again, this is pretty much the gold standard to do this sort of thing. And there's a lot of advanced things we can do in Docker that we didn't go over in this tutorial. But as we saw, we we're able to easily install pip packages that were compatible with the AWS architecture and run them in AWS in just a matter of a few steps. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for today's video, everyone. As we saw, we went over the methodology to actually deploy Docker containers to our Lambdas to run our Lambdas with any PIP packages we want, which is a very robust method and allows us to produce production level applications. So if you were able to get it to work, please leave a like or a subscription to the channel because it is your support that allows me to make more engaging content for the community. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.